Mind Your Farm Business on realagriculture.com is brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. If you're at a crossroads in your farm business or your career, who do you turn to for advice? On this edition of the Mind Your Farm Business podcast, we're going to talk to Deb Stark. Now, those of you who've been around a little while probably recognize the name, but as of right now, Deb Stark actually doesn't have a title, and she wouldn't have it any other way. But while she's definitely worn several different hats in the agriculture industry and in the public service, right now she spends a lot of her time mentoring those that are working their way through the agriculture industry. Mentorship is what we're going to talk about in this episode of Mind Your Farm Business. We're going to talk about it from the perspective of someone who is perhaps seeking out a mentor, why they might want to, what they can expect, what your responsibilities are as a mentee. And then we're also going to talk about it from the perspective of being a mentor, what sort of time commitment you need to spend, what you might have to offer, some of the rewards for doing it, And also, of course, while we like to keep it positive, we've also got to talk about what happens when maybe it's just not working out. All that and more on this edition of Mind Your Farm Business. All right, I am Lindsay Smith and welcome to this edition of the Mind Your Farm Business podcast. Uh, In putting together this season, uh, we all sort of sat down and brainstormed about, you know, what we should cover. And one of my suggestions was mentorship. And so I am incredibly happy to say that joining me today is Deb Stark to talk about mentorship. Now, Deb, we spoke a little bit before I hit record. I'm just introducing you as Deb Stark. What is your title? (laughs) Thanks, Lindsay. Um, I appreciate that. And um, I don't have a title at this point in my life, which is um, kind of terrifying and um, empowering as well. I am involved in uh, several different organizations, doing some volunteering and doing some mentoring, but it doesn't roll up to a, to a nice title at this point in time. So I'm just Deb. Just Deb. Just Deb Stark. And, yeah. that's, and that's okay. I think that's pretty great. (laughs) Now we are we are talking mentorship. And I want to talk about it from both sides. So I want, I really want to talk about, you know, as a mentor yourself, what that involves. But let's start first with uh, someone who may be thinking about, you know, seeking out a mentor. What are what are some of the reasons why, why you might want to do that? And then let's talk about how we get there. Sure. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I think usually, when my, from my experience, when I've seen people seeking out mentorship programs, it's usually because they're looking for some kind of a change in their life. It's either I want to learn about something new, I, I want to, or I want to change my career, I want to get involved with the board, I want this promotion. But it's some kind of a change aspect that's driving them to say, what I'm doing now is not necessarily what's going to be successful for me in the future. I need to find uh, uh, new sources of information, and one of the sources of information takes them down that mentorship role, I think. And so so if someone sort of is at that crossroads potentially, and, and maybe that's a very positive place, right? Maybe it's, it, I don't think it always has to be from a perspective of, of not doing well, but it's when you're, yeah. when you're driven or you're excited about something or you, you envision moving in, in a different direction or, or leapfrogging forward, that's a great time. How then though, I mean, we do have some mentorship programs out there, but does a, does a mentorship have to be you know, a, a written agreement and very formal, or can it, what, what does that look like? Yeah, sure. So let me um, just um, agree with what you've said. I don't see mentorships as usually um, I, when people are in a place of, of, um, of unpleasant. This is usually a positive kind of time. So I spent most of my career with the Ontario Public Service in the Ministry of Agriculture, so I saw a lot of people interested in basically advancing through the system and um, looking for promotions, looking for job changes. That's where I saw a lot of them. Or um, I, more recently, people trying to get on board. So those are all positive. They're, they're just part of um, your growth experience and your learning, not a negative thing at all. Anyway, um, back to your main question about what does it look like. Uh, there's a couple of... Um, there's a couple of ways. There are formal programs. 
so you can get involved in maybe your your particular sector of agriculture has a program maybe your workplace if you work with a large organization has a program um, the advancing women have a uh, of the ag- Women's Network have a mentorship program that they're just uh, rolling out now. So you can look for those former ones, which are usually someone else's matching. So you put in your application, someone else does the match and assigns a mentor to you. It's usually a defined period of time. You are really encouraged to have very clear goals, and I will say I think this is really important, having clear goals, having a formal process in place, and working through it. But there's also lots of informal mentorship that goes on, and almost anyone can be a mentor. And that's when you find somebody that you really respect and admire for what they've accomplished and ask whether or not they'll spend some time with you to talk through Again, what they've done and what they can share with you that would be useful. So, it, it, that and that can be, you know, we agree to do that once a quarter, or I would just like to meet with you a couple times, or or a lifelong relationship. Quite frankly. Mm-hmm. And so, for for someone who you know is at this crossroads or has identified sort of that someone that they admire or perhaps want to mirror, you know, their path in some way. I mean, do you just co- sort of cold call people, or what do you think? Should you should you seek out someone to maybe introduce you to that person? How how might that work best? Yeah. So I think one of the things I I I distinguish between I think there's a difference between a mentor and a role model, and both of them can be useful. And the difference is with the role model, you are really hoping and and establishing some kind of, uh, with the mentor, sorry, Lindsay, with the mentor relationship, you're establishing some kind of a formal relationship. With the role model, you can kind of watch in the distance and study and, you know, learn what you can. But with a mentor, you want someone who's going to spend some time with you, who's going to think about your Um, what you need and what your particular situation is. So it's much more of a a relationship. So I think in that way, you do need to do a little bit of homework. It's not just the, the, the smartest person in your sector. It is someone who is a good communicator, who's someone that you think can talk. I think it is better if you have some kind of a relationship at the beginning, you at least know them. So before asking them to formally go into a mentoring relationship with you, I'd want to have a few coffees, a few introductions, and just see whether or not there's someone you respect and uh, really feel that you can learn from. I think taking that time up front is going to give you a better experience, and it's absolutely going to make better use of their time. Mm -hmm. We've got to take a short break of this edition of Mind Your Farm Business brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. Now, a word from our sponsor. This episode of Mind Your Farm Business is brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. In many farm families, the older generation is thinking about life after farming, while the younger generation is excited for the future and poised to take the reins. Our people have the expertise to help all parties prepare for succession and put their plans in motion. Your farm's legacy and its future is too important to leave to chance. Go to rbc.com slash agriculture to find an ag specialist near you. And now you you did you did mention having clear goals. So, you know, clearly with it, with a program that has sort of a prescribed amount of time and and expectations, um, you know, that's sort of laid out for you. But in a less formal sort of setting, um, what setting those goals? Do you do that on your own? Would you do that together? And and what's an example of what those goals might look like? Yep. E- even even in the informal one, I think the the person who wants the mentoring needs to have a clear what they want from the mentor. So during my career, I've been asked by lots of people to be a mentor. And one of the first, one of the first um, you know, questions is, what are, what are you working towards? Because if you don't have that, it just becomes a you know, nice conversation over coffee kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So you do, you do need to spend that time and think about that. It's, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, I want to... I don't know, move my farm business from from pigs to cash crop in six months and or over this season and, you know, help me get there. Or I want to be the manager of my department in six months, help me get there. It can be that specific, but it can be more about, um, for instance, I used to mentor veterinarians who were in private practice and trying to decide whether or not they wanted to stop being the veterinarian on the farm and get a job with industry or government and 
that's a big career decision. What might that look like? So they weren't clear yet, and they wanted to think it through. Those kind of things are ideal for a mentorship relationship So because it gives you a little bit. It's not quite as concrete. So I guess I'm saying you can have a range, but you have to have something. If you just come, that's a real red flag for me as a, uh, a mentor. If you just come and say, I'd like you to be my mentor, and you don't know why, you don't know what you want from me, I know it's not going to be, first of all, effective for you, and second of all, a good use of my time. I just won't know how to help you. I don't know what I'm working towards. Mm -hmm. And so that, I think, brings us to part B, or maybe it's part A. I guess it depends on your perspective. (laughs) But if someone wants to be a mentor or is asked to be a mentor, what? why do you think it's valuable to act as a mentor to someone? Oh, um, I think that in all of the experiences that I've had, I've learned as much as I've given. So one of the criteria, I think, for being a good mentor is someone who is genuinely curious and you're going to learn you're going to um, get a different perspective as, as a as a mentor one of the things that uh, you need to do people are going to ask you know tell me about these experiences or how you have handled these situations you you think about that for sure pull from your past experience but you also really need to think about but what's going on in this world for a 30 year old in 2019 because it isn't when i was 30 it's a different world so you have to apply that so you it really it's really rewarding to do that thinking and that learning and that personal growth that's that's uh, what a a good mentor will get would will get out of the experience but um you have to be really interested in seeing other people develop And we are not all, and we shouldn't apologize if we're not, if we don't really (laughs) care. But if you really help want to see other people succeed, not just yourself, then uh, I think you're really going to enjoy being a a mentor. And I guess one thing I just want to say is, if you are asked, Lindsay, to be a mentor, especially the first couple times, just stop and savor that moment. Just stop and say what that means, because it's usually a bit of a, a surprise, um, to someone in their career to go, oh, my goodness, what could I possibly have to teach someone? And, and another individual has said, yeah, you've got some experiences and you've got some skills that I want to learn from. You should uh, take a moment to celebrate your own success there. Hmm. Now, but it, it is, of course, a time commitment. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And so, so how, how then do you, or, or what might someone expect as to what the time commitment looks, looks like? Because I think that would definitely be a part of, and I love the idea of celebrating that you've even been asked, because absolutely, sometimes I think we forget to pat ourselves on the back for where we've been and where we're going to and, and where we're at. But, you know, when, when someone's asking of your time, what might a mentor expect of that demand? I think that's one of the things when you sit down and agree on um, a relationship that you negotiate in advance. So is this going to be, I would like to pick your brains when I have a problem. So, you know, maybe twice a year, a phone call and a coffee kind of relationship, or I would like to meet quarterly for an hour. And I, as the mentee commit to having an agenda and we'll work through these scenarios so the, it is something you absolutely need to to um, negotiate in advance and both feel comfortable that that's the right kind of time. Because, as I say, it's, it's, there's prep work sometimes. I mean, there's, I've been in re- experiences where I've helped people role play through job interviews or problem solve or I need to go sometimes and do some more reading myself about what, what you know, how what does the best practice about dealing with this kind of situation? You, you need to think for every, I'd say for every hour that you're going to commit to that uh, mentee face-to-face, maybe at least another hour in prep time to really serve them well. Right. So definitely part of that equation of, yes. of yes. if you can say yes to this person. Now, I like to keep things positive, but there's always the situations that don't really work out. How do you know when, as either a mentee or mentor, that it might be time to move on? Uh, so a couple of things I've seen over my career. If you Sometimes mentors say yes, but they actually don't have the time or they're not actually willing to commit the time. And if you see that people are canceling meetings or coming unprepared, despite the fact that you've tried to set them up for, for, for a productive meeting, that's a clue to, to definitely move on. If 
you find that that person actually can't help you. So if it turns into just a great storytelling session where they talk about all the times when, you know, they were the first manager in this department and what they did and, and don't really, as I say, try and think about how the world has changed, how it's different now and what your unique situation is, that's a clue to move on as well. I think um, I think there's also you can move to different stages. So there may be a very intense period where you are working, you know, fairly structured, fairly routinely, and say, you know what, I don't need that anymore. I sure do want to keep you keep your number and feel like I can phone you every once in a while. So the relationship changes. Those are some of the clues. I would say um, as a mentor, again, if someone is not doing the work and coming with a fairly clear sense of what they're working towards, either a short-term or a long-term, or even if the work is about figuring out where they want to go, if they don't have a good sense about that, that's a, uh, that's a real flag for me. And if they're, if they're just not committing, say that's, I think, the one. The other one, again, you start to get a sense whether or not you're helping that person or whether you're not helping that person. And if you're not, then... There's no shame in that. It's just maybe it's, it, it's time to move on. Mm-hmm. The other thing I would flag, if you're in an organization, I was thinking about this, sometimes I've had experiences where people have been told by their manager that they should get a mentor. So they come and say, I need a mentor. Well, why? I don't know. My manager has told me I need a mentor. <laughs> that should be a real red flag for you as the employee. What is your manager um, trying to tell you? Is are, are they thinking you're great or are they avoiding, and unfortunately, managers do do this, <laughs> avoiding a difficult conversation where actually your performance is not good and they're hoping someone else will help you figure that out because they don't want to give that message. So that's, that's something if you're in a larger kind of company to, to push that manager carefully about what they're, what they're telling you when they say you need a mentor. That is some some very good advice, because I certainly know of situations sort of on both sides of that, that it was very much a positive, very much a, you know, you've got great potential, and I can't maybe give you yeah. the perspective that you need, and you're going to do great with someone else and bring that back here. And then the flip side of, you know, it being a manager that just probably is trying to deflect dealing with a yeah. problem. Exactly. And, and, and can't. So definitely seeing both sides of that. So that's really great advice. Um, we are just about out of time, which that went really, really quickly. <laughs> um, any <laughs> final words of encouragement for, for mentees and mentors? Um, I just definitely, we all need people we can talk to. And it's really good to have people in around that say you can chew things through. I would say definitely give it a try and see if it works for you. But don't limit yourself to one mentor. That's, you can have a range of people in your life that you can learn from and that can provide that encouragement and that kind of support and perspective. And mentors are, mentors are definitely part of it. They're not all, they're not the be all and end all, but definitely worth um, uh, going for it and see what happens. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Deb. Thank you, Lindsay. And there you have it. Whether you are on the side of mentoring or being mentored, there's certainly a lot to take in, some time to set aside, and the importance of setting some clear goals. A big thank you to Deb Stark for joining us, and thank you for minding your farm business.